Good afternoon, everyone. It's Brian Caprice from Keep Trading Simple, and welcome to this week's Nadex Weekly Charts and Analysis. Happy New Year, everyone. January 4th. I can't believe I'm saying that already. I, it literally, it, it feels like we were just doing, um, you know, uh, banners and things like that for 2021, and uh, now we're doing 2022, and I don't even, I have, look, I haven't even updated the slide correctly. Let me fix that real quick. There we go. 2022. Um, amazing. I'll be messing up checks forever if anybody out there is still using checks. So, with that said, uh, let's just dive right into things. We have a bunch to talk about today. Um, we had some uh, metaphorical bombs drop just a little while ago, um, you know, in regards to kind of what this year is going to look like. And uh, I don't think the market was ready for it. We've had some profit taking in Apple, given NQ a couple uh, curves. The yen is just completely imploding. Again, great for Japan. Um, and it's very interesting seeing some consumer sentiment or uh, seeing what the trader sentiment is uh, and how high and how many people right now are short uh, in something that has been just absolutely exploding across the board. So a lot to talk about. Uh, let's just go right in. Uh, before we begin, though, I do have to make sure. Uh, actually, we'll start with this first. Actually, let's do the disclaimer first. Um, you guys have heard of this before, but. Uh, all of you know this, that trading on ADEX involves risk and may not be appropriate for all. Members risk losing the cost and other transaction, including fees. Now, you should carefully consider whether trading on ADEX is appropriate for you in light of your investment experience and financial resources. And any trading decisions you make are solely your responsibility at your own risk. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. None of the material presented here and is being construed as a solicitation, recommendation, or offer to buy or sell any financial instrument on Nadex or elsewhere. Nadex is subject to U.S. regulatory oversight by the CFTC, and Nadex is a registered trademark of the IG Group. So for those of you that know me, you guys have heard this before, but I'll give you the quick 30-second spiel real quick. Um, as I mentioned, I'm the president and CEO of Keep Trading Simple. Um, I've been doing this for, I hate to say a long time, but I, I just have to come to that grips. You know, it's, it's 2022. I got to come to grips to it that I'm old, but I started back in 1999, if any of you guys remember Y2K. Uh, I'm not a 12th generation trader, right? I don't think actually there is 12 generations for the traders, but you guys know what I mean. My dad actually was a programmer for IBM, one of the uh, ones and zeros guys. But, you know, I'd always had a passion for the markets. It's something I entered and started doing at an early age. Um, Learn the traditional way, right? seminars, books. There was no such thing as YouTube back then, so learned a lot of uh, the wrong ways to do things uh, the first time. Um, it's one of the main reasons why I, I choose to teach this day and age because, again, I made so many mistakes, and anybody, anybody that's a parent out there, you guys know, you always want your kids to you know, do things a better way than you did it, and that's why I do what I do. So, you know, I learned stocks options uh, you know, right off the bat. Uh, about six years in, I found the foreign currency market and absolutely fell in love with it, love currencies. Um, just one of my favorite things to trade. I love the 24 hour nature of it. I love the leverage of it. I uh, learned to trade futures. I uh, became a financial advisor. I worked for one of the big three banks for a bit. I uh, learned all about bonds there. Great experience. Um, didn't stay there long. I realized that, you know, uh, I felt more shackled as an advisor than I did as, a, as an educator. Um, and I just, you know, again, I want to help as many people as I can. Uh, actually, I can say that I, I, was in New York City. I lived in the financial district. I'd walk past the New York Stock Exchange uh, every single day. Uh, it was awesome. Uh, I could actually see the bull. If you guys have seen the bull in New York City, the bull was actually right outside my office. I could look at it every single day, and I used to have lunch at a nice little sandwich shop right next to the bull. Um, so it was kind of cool. I got to hear all the stories, got to have happy hour where all the floor traders are drinking. I got to hear all kinds of amazing things up there. Great experience. Um, and then I, you know, after that, I traveled for about eh, about six years around the United States and Canada, um, helping traders find their own way in the markets without having any of the financial services industry. So um, now I do this. Uh, in, in, in this day and age that we live in, it's very easy to teach remotely because, I mean, basically, as traders, we don't have an office. Our office is at home, and you know, again, so uh, COVID really didn't change much for me. And uh, now. It's just, it's even more fun. Um, I get to talk to more people now because more people are trading and it's a really, really great time. I do need to update this picture. I actually, I just took a, a great picture of my son. I have another son. Uh, there's actually four little ones now. The two the two boys there are actually tall, as tall as Melissa is there. I obviously have a beard for those of you that, you know, again, with COVID, I, I grew a respectable beard. Um, my wife teases me now that like, hey, wait a second, maybe you should be Santa when you're older because you love kids. And I was like, yeah, we'll see. And um, Jen is actually in that picture. She's, I think, one. Uh, she's now three, so she's obviously much bigger than that. The boy is about that size right now, the new boy. Um, well, I guess he's only three months, but he's he's on the bigger side. So, yeah, I need to update some things there. Maybe maybe rather soon I'll do it. Uh, with that said, my trading style is a little bit different. Uh, I am not a huge, heavy indicator-based trader. Um, 
I know how to use them all. I feel that most of them are lagging. Most of them have major holes. Uh, I'm a price action trader, so I'll be using supply and demand today. You guys will see a lot of horizontal rectangles. I'll draw some triangles. We'll draw some lightning bolts. We'll draw some uh, some check marks on the on the charts. But you'll see my style of analysis is rather easy. Uh, I am very much an if this then that trader. So a lot of the analysis we're doing today, keep that in mind, right? Uh, I'm not a market order person like we're going to buy or sell right now. I am an if this then that trader. So a lot of the trade setups we're going to talk about are meant for more of kind of sometime this week. I don't know when they're going to trigger, but whenever they do, that's when we you know potentially take them. All right. Uh, and again, any trading decisions you make are your responsibility. There's no such thing as, well, Brian, you said, yeah, I said this is my analysis. If you guys take the trade, that's entirely up to you guys. All right. With that said, let's go into the agenda for what we're going to cover today. Uh, first thing, upcoming news events. We had some news today. And when, when I say upcoming news events, I'm talking about the economic or financial news releases. Uh, Tomorrow is going to be a big day with FOMC. Today, the bombs we got, I don't know if the bombs are foreshadowing what we're going to see tomorrow. But I will say, um, you know, we, we, we have the first kind of, um, you know, shots in the sand, for lack of a better word, right? Uh, we know that this is going to be a big year. Inflation is a major problem. Um, with that being said, uh, mentioning interest rates, uh, I think, is uh, something that you need to kind of, we, we just need to, it's the elephant in the room. Everybody, you got, you got to talk about it. And Kosh Kerry made some big comments, and I'll review those in a few seconds, but we're going to look at the rest of the news events that we need to keep our eyes on. As you guys know, I absolutely love news trading. If you're not news trading or you heard from some guru that, oh, that's bad, you never want to do that, you have no idea what you're missing out on. Um, and, and again, trading the right vehicle, right? A lot of you will see Natix in the bottom left-hand corner. If you don't know what that is, it's a great buy. It's, it's a regulated U.S. binary exchange. And again, if you guys don't know what it is, and you're not trading news, you're absolutely missing out on easy opportunity, and you should take advantage of it. Uh, if you guys want, you can message me, and I'll send you a link to get a, a, you know, a demo account for it. Um, then we're going to cover indices. Obviously, today is pretty interesting. Uh, Tesla and Apple are really kind of messing it up for the NQ, uh, especially after Apple hit a huge day yesterday. And again, Tesla and Apple both blew out of the water yesterday. Today, it's more of a pullback, some profit-taking. Um, it's a bad press for Tesla, but you know what they say, there's no such thing as bad press. Uh, I would have to agree with that as well. I think, uh, you know, it's easy to be angry at someone when they're doing so well, right? Uh, but hater, you know, haters got to hate, I guess is what they say. But, um, you know, we'll see. I don't, you know, <laughs> what they're saying is not, I don't believe my personal opinion is it's not really reality. And I don't think, you know, again, business is business. Uh, then we'll cover Forex. There's a lot going on in the Forex market right now. This is going to be the year of Forex. I'm saying it right now. I know there's a lot of, uh, we always joke that there's, uh, you know, that there's uh, some big names out there that watch these presentations because we'll say something and then like it happens like a little while later. Um, this morning I talked about a double raise, uh, two and one raise for this year. And then all of a sudden we got that we are going to have two raises this year, like half hour later. So uh, I don't know if uh, Kosh Kerry listens to us, but pretty funny that within like an hour of us talking about it, he announced it. Uh, then we'll cover commodities. Uh, OPEC Plus meeting today. Um, we'll cover that in the oil section, but Commodities are kind of a hot topic right now with, uh, it, you know, whenever we talk interest rates, the first thing you think about is inflation and gold. Definitely been some movement in that market, uh, silver as well. And then again, oil and natural gas. Natural gas has been kind of all over the place. It's like a slinky going down the stairs. It goes up, it goes down, it goes left, it goes right. Um, and oil, oil has been an interesting market. Um, <laughs> the last bit of news we had from OPEC Plus was basically like, hey, we can manage it. Don't worry about it. Trust us. Um, they kind of sound like a used car salesman. So <laughs> with the, we'll manage it. Don't worry about it. We got we got it. We got it. You know, at the same time, they're profiting from the uh, fluctuations and the increase in, uh, you know, oil prices. So, yeah. So with that said, with, uh, these are the four things we're going to cover. Let's go right over into the charts. Uh, let me click. I got to click the right one here. Uh, let's go over here. All right. And um, I'm going to start off with uh, we're going to start off with the VIX. OK, um, whoops. There we go. Actually, you know what? I forgot that's I had it set on purpose. Let's go over the news first. So this morning we already got the OPEC plus data. And again, I'm going to cover this when we get into oil. You can see kind of down here what they talked about it. The, the, the trust us statement is where is it? We're flexible enough to manage demand fluctuation. Right. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about that in oil. Um, but again, this morning we saw ISM manufacturing. It was a miss. It was negative. And we saw Jolts also miss. And there's more to this story. Jolts' job openings 
seeing the job openings are down is kind of a little bit of a head scratcher. Um, and I think the market was not necessarily prepared for that. Uh, at the same time, we also saw that there was a record 4.5 million workers quit their jobs in November. It was a new record high. And um, again, it's part of it because of mobility. But again, it's one of those things that um, I get why people are leaving their jobs if they're happy and they think they can get more elsewhere. But it does hurt overall productivity with everything. Um, kind of a kind of an interesting kind of statistic and i and i get it with everything going on right now but um yeah it's interesting um kush curry here's what we heard you know this is the big bomb the two rate hikes two rate hikes this year actually i have it right up here um and again it, previously they saw no hikes until 2024 we had an entire basically two years until we really saw big rate hikes and now they're saying there's two rate hikes this year i mean if he would have said 2023 that's one thing, and I think everybody, was, I mean, they've been calling for interest rate hikes, but the fact that we're talking about it like this, that, you know, previously saw no hikes till 2024, and now it's 2022, it's two years sooner? Wow, that's a big one. And he says, the cost of ending up in a high inflation regime are likely to be greater than the cost of ending up in a low inflation regime. So, again, is there political pressure in this environment? Yeah, probably. There's probably a decent amount of it. But again, that is a big, big change in stance. And that's why we're seeing some of the market movement. Now, uh, I'll mention VIX in a second. That is directly related to the VIX. As far as the rest of this week, tomorrow morning is, tomorrow in general is going to be a pretty big day. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because ADP non-farm employment change, this is kind of a big one. How many people are getting hired back? How many you know new people is there? It's supposed to be lower than before. Right. And again, we kind of see that in this time frame. And, you know, but again, could this be a blowout number? It could be. And again, that could be a, a big stimulus to the market. Building permits for Canada only affects currency traders. Again, that's a big jump in building permits. New permits means, you know, again, the economy is recovering and exploding back again. That's a that's a good thing. Uh, this this could be a, a nice little a little boost for the cat, especially after today. And then F FOMC meeting notes now. It's hard when you, it's click. It's funny you click in like eight times a year. They meet. They announce Fed things. I mean, I, there's no expectation that they're raising rates or anything like that. But they are laying out the year. And we know the tapering's coming. We know that most of the tapering will most likely be done by March. They're talking about you know an interest rate hike in June. The stance really matters. Okay, raising interest rates absolutely solves our inflation problem. Right, we're at 39 year highs. It has to be fixed. Okay. Again, why Kashkari is talking about we're raising it twice. Um, depending on the tone, if it's a weaker tone saying, yeah, because of Omicron, we may slow it down. But really the disruption from Omicron, besides like flights and things like that, my mother was actually supposed to fly out today to see my sister. Yeah, it was partially the snow that we have in Maryland, but you know, it's also because of staffing. There's been tons and tons of flights canceled, right? They don't have the staff to fly the planes. They don't have the crews. And you're seeing in all the service industries. That's really been the biggest effect, and that's why now we only have to quarantine for five days instead of 10. And I guess originally it was 14, right? And then we went to 10, and now we're down to five because we just don't have people. So question is, is it safer or not as dangerous as it was before? Or were we wrong before when we said 10 to 15? Or are we being dangerous now playing with fire and, and saying five? I mean, a lot of questions we don't really know, but their stance is going to make a big difference on what we see, particularly tomorrow in the markets and probably for the rest of the week, right, as the, as the market adjusts. Thursday, we have unemployment claims. And look at this. This is like below, this is pre COVID numbers in the boom cycle, right? So, raising interest rates right now, I mean, unemployment claims are, are lower than what they were before COVID actually started. So, it tells you kind of where we are with the unemployment situation. Then we have services. And again, I expect services number to be a bit of a miss as well. I think services is going to be hard to grasp right now. Again, what are the effects of Omicron? Five days, eight days, 10 days? Um, roll the dice. Is it odd or even? I mean, I think it, there's so much in there that people are talking about. Um, Friday, obviously, first Friday of not only the month, right, but also of the year, we got the big non-farm payroll number. And right now, it's expected to be 200,000 higher than what it was last time. Now, last time, we had a little bit of drama, right? The forecast in December is that we were going to have 550,000 new jobs, right? We only had 210. That was a big, that was an earth shattering food, right? Right? Yeah, we'll see kind of what the preliminary data looks like uh, again with ADP, but again, the ADP number and the overall government number are different numbers, okay? Um, so we'll see what this number comes in at. 
Average hourly earnings, it's great that it's going up by 0.4. We've seen inflation CPI go up 0.8, 1.5. So it, it would be great if we are getting paid more. And again, this number last time also was a disappointment, right? We were getting paid less and inflation was accelerated even faster, meaning that our dollar is not buying us as much as it did before. So again, big number. And then the unemployment rate. Will it go down to 4.1? I don't know. I think this is a very, very interesting number. You can see last time it was a huge drop down, right? They've been missing this forever. I think eventually uh, one of these things, we're going to get a jump uh, up, right? You got 4.5 million people, again, leaving their jobs. Some of them are hiring, getting hired at other places. Some of them are not. Some of them are retiring. Some of them are I mean, again, there's a lot of things going on. 4.1 is really kind of historically low. It was such a big jump last time. It's like, how could they be so wrong last time and then still continue? Wouldn't be surprised if there's actually an adjustment up to 4.3 and then it becomes a 4.2. So I think this 4.1 is a little bit on the low side, but I think the real big thing would be the employment change number. Because remember, unemployment rate is not 100% accurate. Okay. If you've been out of the workforce too long, you are no longer included in that number. So, you know, you can have it say 3.6, but that, you know, if your utilization rate is, is rather low, right? If it's only at 65%, it means it's not 100% accurate. And we're kind of at the stage right now with the recovery where this, this data is no longer accurate. We should be looking at how many people are getting hired back in a new job. So, again, this is a bang, bang week. Uh, again, with Cash Carrier's comments today, FOMC tomorrow. Thursday will be a little bit of a slow day, kind of reeling from the FOMC meeting notes. And then, bam, right into non-farm payroll, which is which is arguably the biggest news-moving event or the most important news event that exists on the economic calendar, okay? Um, a lot going on. Again, uh, this is Forex Factory. I like it because it's simple. It's plain. If you guys need a little bit more advanced, don't forget, head over to Daily FX. You can actually go to their economic calendar. And if you want it to alert you, you have the ability to kind of set this up and, you know, add it to your calendar, and it'll come up and it'll alert you a bunch of things as well. As well, you know, Plus, they have a little bit more. I have low set on here right now. It should actually be just this. Um, but again, you'll see kind of what we have going for. That's just for today. Uh, next seven days, you can kind of see all the things in there with a little bit more data and, and learn about what they are. So, um, yeah, a lot going on first week. Uh, one of the things that I do like over here, too, and I'm going to bring it up now before we get too far ahead. Don't forget that they have, because they are linked with a brokerage firm, they actually have client sentiment. Okay. One of the things I'm looking at right now is the fact that the yen sentiment, so many, 77% of clients are net short the yen right now, and yet the yen is going absolutely bonkers in the downward direction. So all the pairs against the 77% of people right now are sitting on the wrong side of the trade. Consumer sentiment, understanding these client sentiment, so important, so important. Kind of the same thing where you have gold is long, uh, pound is, is, is equal. 77% of people right now are, uh, you know, <laughs> are, 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 bull, are uh, short, right? Same thing. Um, yeah, oil's kind of flat. But again, don't forget, they have this little feature too, which is pretty nice. We're going to talk about it. So let's go over and let's talk about the VIX. Okay, to start off with the indices, we need to cover the VIX. So VIX is up 4% today, meaning we should have all the indices down. They're kind of holding firm right now. You're seeing the VIX is pulling back from its spike. And a lot of this is Kashkari too, throwing a monkey wrench in there, being like, hey, Raising interest rates two times today. That's a big deal, right? Um, with that being said, with it pulling back, you're seeing that they're trying to fight back. Now, NQ is having a rough day. I'll cover that in a second. But right now, with the VIX spiking up, it's kind of peaked back up again. This is not really a supply and demand-based asset. I would say right now, the news for the morning is out. It should kind of stumble back down. And typically, even when you have that morning spike, the afternoons, it tends to kind of run back down again. Every day, you can kind of see it running back down, at least till the end of the end of the business day. With it pushing back down, I wouldn't be surprised if we close back down at 1680, probably the 1680 mark, just a little bit above where we were. That should help propel the positive indices, the ES, the YM, and the Russell higher the rest of the day and maybe, maybe start helping us get this NQ back to even. Um, I think NQ will have a hard time with that. I'll show you that in just a second. But uh, on the other front, let's look at the dollar index. Dollar index took a big run up, kind of got pushed back down. But for the most part, the dollar index, the Europeans started the market here. We're kind of at the same point. So a little spike up in the European session, drove it down. No surprise, 1030 in the morning, right there, this bottom candle, 1030. We reversed back up again. We're kind of where we started the European-based day for the dollar, okay? 
So we know VIX is up, but it is starting to retrace back again. We are in lunchtime right now, but you know, besides that end of the day kind of closing, um, we should be kind of quiet the rest of the day as far as news goes. Now, ES, let's drop the ES back down in the 15 minutes. So ES after the open had a pretty tur had a pretty turbulent open. Actually, let's drop this down a little bit lower to the five minute. As you can see, uh, let's see, here was your 930 candle, okay? This morning we mentioned, we said we were kind of bra you know, bracketed in. We had kind of a top and bottom. Actually, I can just go to the 15 on this one. Um, we kind of had a top or bottom in. And with us kind of rallying up and opening up here in this top section, led us for a short trade entry. Remember, if you guys are not sure how to trade the opening, get down to your 15 minute and look for pullbacks in the, really in, in the, I'd say 9 to 9.30, 8.45 to 9.30 time frame is when you're looking for the pullbacks. That kind of showed us we were going to have a short day today. Now, you may say, what the heck happened at 10 uh, at 10.30 today, right? 10 o'clock? This is the Kashkari news today about raising interest rates twice, okay? You may say, why would that happen? Raising interest rates is bad for the stock market, okay? When you raise the cost of lending, or actually, I guess, the cost of borrowing, it's bad for them. Okay, it should help crash the market a bit. Okay, that's what this news does. That's how important this is. And again, this is the potential that we're going to see for FOMC. So right now, and again, I'm going to move some fibs around here. Let's take this fibs from yesterday. Uh, there was a short trade in there as well as a long from that same level. Um, we don't need that right now. Let's take fibs from our low yesterday. Um, oh, I'm going to have to change it around. And we'll come back up high. All right, uh, let me change. Sorry, I have a couple different settings that we're going to use here. Let's take this, this, go here, here, here. Uh, let's change that to this. Uh, let's change that to purple, so it's a little different. Uh, the 50, let's make that black. Um, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, that's that's good. Oh, you know what? Let's do uh, let's do percentages. Uh, let's put them on the right, and top is fine. There we go. All right, so you can see the major crash from this morning. We pulled back from yesterday's bottom, really from yesterday's open until kind of the open this morning. That was kind of the peak right here. You can see we kind of had this pullback into the 50%. Now, again, FIB traders, they're typically coinciding with other trade strategies. There is actually a small level sitting right in here, right? Um, so again, it is a level that has been tested and it's one I think that you needed to watch out for. We're looking for a reversal. Now, the reversal in this one came a little bit late. The 1030 candle is actually here. Uh, actually here okay unfortunately the reversal only happens if we're driving in a direction news is what trumped it today and then again we had that parabolic move to the downside at 11 30. so again the Koch card news drove us down it did drive us back down in a parabolic fashion into a 50 percent retracement at a levels of buyers this is a reversal signal now it's a little bit too late now if you got into it i think it's a pretty decent trade Reason why I like it, and again, FIB traders will be using somewhere between the uh, risk level, somewhere between the 50 and the 61.8. Um, again, Nadex traders are going to be using this 50 uh, as their entry level. I like it because we had such a strong push in. We did have a level of basing, and you can see we had a little bit of a hiccup here. I would say top side, uh, and again, depending on when we get there, I would say that the target for this long should be sitting up here at approximately 47.92 think it's a great trade. VIX we see is starting to kind of slow down and roll. ES is really trying to fight to put in a positive day. If the VIX continues to deteriorate and go from 4% down, if we have no other major headlines, this should continue to rise back up again. Now, are we going to be able to have a, a new high today? Are we going to break 4808? Um, I think the fact that we had so much movement off of, whoops, that's not what I want to move. I think because we had so much movement off of this kind of opening area, and again, the 930 candle was this red one right here. Again, starting there with a little bit of a red, kind of a telltale sign that you should have been short at the open. Um, and again, blew through a million stocks, a million, you know, a million strikes on the way down. Um, I think we really got to get a confirmation above this level. For those of you that know what the Harry Potter trade is, I think if we get that confirmation back down into this level, get some decent space, that should be our launch point with a break above. But again, we need the confirmation out the top. Part of the problem right now and why I'm saying we don't really have a lot, and again, what I short off of this one, you could, um, but I really would like to see it come up and start the base. I think it has every right higher until we really get true data on what the interest rate change looks like. And again, remember the market's kind of already factored in a little bit. So I'm thinking there could be potential for new longs. 
But 4808.50 long is, is kind of what I'm, I would like it to burst through. And here's why. Okay, let me explain this real quick. Let me take one step back. The reason why I'm so excited about this is because, again, it is a high level. Every basic trader in the world knows what support and resistance is. Okay. Because everybody knows what it is, they're looking to say, hey, listen, if we break that, we're going long, baby. Yes. Do that. This is the ultimate trap. Okay. As price goes above, everybody knows you go long, you put your stop loss below the level. And that's why you see these pullbacks. Okay. The reason why I want this to kind of break through base and pull back in the level is because I want every single one of those people that is a support and resistance trader, I want them stopped out. And then when they're when, where their stop loss is, is where I want to get in. I want to get in for cheaper and then take this long. Okay. So yeah, can we get there today? I think it may have a little bit of a problem coming through, but I'm looking for a pullback to punch higher. As I said, I do believe there will be a hawkish tone tomorrow, but I believe that the market has already factored that in there. The market already knows that. Um, and again, especially after Cross Curry's kind of pound today, I would be looking for opportunities to go long. So I think targets to the long side are 4792. I don't think we have any problems hitting that when it's an area of interest. It was a Parabolic move off Kosh Curry comments, again, highly emotional to a 50% Fib retracement off of yesterday's low to today's open. Okay, so there's a, there's ES. NQ. NQ also had the drop. Kosh Curry definitely helped out with this one. This one was more or less doomed anyway because of Apple and Tesla. Okay, now we did talk yesterday about a break below. We had an alert. You guys can see the uh, the alert channel in here. We had a level that we liked, but we really wanted to know when it was going to break through this level at 16,282. We were looking for really a continuation down into the psychological level of 16,200. It did that, and magically, again, this line was drawn here yesterday. This is, We drew basically blowing through this level and coming down and targeting here, right? It stopped like a dime and literally is now basing back and forth again. So. I think NQ has the opportunity to start retracing, okay? NQ is the perfect storm, and you may say, well, what happened with Apple, right? Well, yesterday was an amazing day for Apple. It broke through new levels of being a huge, huge target, large company, you know, first time ever, right? All record-breaking. Today is a day of profit-taking, okay? Such a huge explosion day, brought it to a new kind of all-time level. It's a profit-taking day. You got to sell it. Um, that's why we're seeing it pull back uh, again, seeing almost the same exact base. Look, here's NQ. There's the, the hit and the pickup, right? Higher lows. Apple, almost the same thing, a little bit lower, but now it's trying to start putting in something and start gaining its round back. And I think Apple has the ability. I don't know if we can get all the way back to 83 today, but again, uh, any, any great news with Apple, I think this continues to push through. I think it continues to drive higher until interest rates are risen. Now, Tesla, Again, Apple's only down 1%. You can see NQ's down 1.6. Tesla is down 3.5. It was worse. It was worse, and it looks almost exactly the same as well. It pushed down. Now, it looks like NQ. It has put a higher low in, right? And is now driving back to retrace this. Now, this is Koshkari. This is also news. And again, everybody's mad at Tesla because they've just opened up a Tesla store in the province that everybody is very upset about in China. And they're saying, oh, they're supporting it. They're supporting genocide. Tesla is not supporting genocide. They're expanding their business. It's like if McDonald's, like if McDonald's opens something there, is everybody going to jump on McDonald's for no guys? It's not. So Tesla is in the news. And like I said, there is plenty of bad news for Tesla, right? There's plenty of bad headlines. Tesla has continued to rise and rise and rise and rise. You know, it made it over the thousand dollar mark last year. You know, Elon, you know, Elon is not secretly trying to support the regime. Elon is expanding the business. It was pre-planned before anybody. It's not like he just snaps his finger and an office pops up, right? This is not like a, a, a pop-up food stand. This has been in the works for a long time before anybody was putting sanctions or anything else over there. You know, if whether he opens it now or we opens in six months when everybody forgets about everything, it's not going to make a difference. So people are a little bit negative on Tesla today and like, oh, negative news is bad. I have to sell. Tesla is it. Tesla is fine. Tesla will continue to rise again. But that's part of the reason why we're seeing Tesla already start to fight back again. Um, it was down a total of 80 at one point. And then, you know, since that time, since the bottom at 11 o'clock has rallied back about eh, about 35, almost half of its retracement back again. So, again, interest rates, not great for Tesla. But I mean, think about where Tesla is. Are they insulated? Yeah. Are they leading kind of? The, yeah. I mean, I think I think Tesla's OK. So if we can get these two to really kind of keep this bottom in. And again, if the VIX continues to fall, it was four. Now the VIX is only uh, only up three. 
as that continues to deteriorate, it should provide some selling and coming back again. And remember, everybody that was short because, oh my God, everybody hates Tesla. They have to get their profit. So if you are short, how do you capture profit? You buy it back again. So again, as that buying starts to occur, buyers step in, Tesla, and these two should rise. NQ should be the same type of scenario. And again, finding that bottom down here at that psychological level. Now, YM, you may say, well, wait a second, what's going on? YM didn't have a big hit. No, nah, it's manufacturing, right? We're seeing this continue to rise. The, the 36,500 we rose through. Again, this, this one, it's odd. This one, it's 1030 reversal was literally the top, right? Actually, yeah, 1030 was the actual peak on this one. Because where we are, there's not really levels here that we can start selling off of. It's really about finding buying opportunities. Unfortunately, this was continuing to drive. The Europeans took this one, and European markets, uh, European traders stepped in right here, right? Right here, breaking through that 16500 And again, psychological level was a top, was a top. Base pulled back, and then again, confirmation has continued to rally higher. It, this could be a new level that we're interested in selling off of in the future. It is uh, not the best. It is kind of a, the two wicks are exactly the same, and we're pulling back right now. But it's kind of the same thing. Is this the bottom for the morning? It is the strongest of all the indices. If the, you know, if the VIX, the VIX is now down to 2.65 from three, just a few seconds ago. If the VIX continues to kind of deteriorate and go to the downside, down VIX means green indices. Again, finding a bottom here should help prevail us higher. Um, where our next big... I would say our next big psychological levels are pretty easy to see. I mean, we literally this morning, it's not, you know, lost on me that we literally hit right here is the 36,800. I would say targets for later on this week and actually maybe even tomorrow. 36,900 right there and the magical 37,000 right there. Okay. Uh, it's so close. I just want to make it perfect. There you go. There's your 37,000. So, yeah, I mean... <laughs> YM is blowing it out. We have good ADP data tomorrow. Tomorrow morning should help propel this higher. Again, market has already factored it and everything for FOMC. I think tomorrow, unless they come out and say, yeah, we're going to raise it two times this year tomorrow, which again will be pretty aggressive for the first for the first day, especially if we have more or less red, you know, minus YM right now. Um, I think the market's got a lot of it filtered in. I think we, uh, you know, I think we could hit 37,000, you know, before the end of the week uh, until they actually raise that interest rate. Yeah, there'll be some pricing in, but Right now, numbers look good. Numbers look good. And again, Christmas, there were some records broken. Uh, Russell. So Russell, it had this big crash right at the open. And again, Russell would come up to an area. We talked about it the other day, 2283. It's a line that we've been looking at. We knew sellers were in the same vicinity and the same thing. This kind of green spike up was the Russell. It was in an area where you should have been looking to take shorts. It spiked down and literally found the buyers down here at 2250. We mentioned that 2250 has been kind of a magical number for it, large psychological number. And that's exactly what we ran into. It literally bounced right off of it. And now the same, same thing with the retracement. Um, whoops, not that one. Uh, for those FIB traders out there that are looking for some, some fun, you can see right now it's kind of hitting back and forth on the 50. It hasn't broken the 618, but again, the VIX is down at 2.63. It is low volume right now because it is 12:30 in the afternoon on the East Coast. Uh, New York traders are obviously eating lunch. Uh, I don't think they got nearly as much snow as we got. Uh, but once they come back in again, if that VIX continues to deteriorate down, this should continue to creep back up again. And for the most part, I mean, VIX is basically dead flat right now from where it closed yesterday. Does that help us kind of propel a bit higher? Yeah, I think it can. I think it can. Um, I just be cautious. Russell is the one that is, you know. Rising interest rates will hurt the Russell the most. Um, if we continue to see this rise, even though it's priced in, I think the Russell has a great short opportunity for tomorrow. Um, I think YM, again, big companies insulated. ES, big companies insulated. Tech, obviously insulated. Uh, people can't live without their, uh, you know, their iPhones. Um, their iPhones and Teslas, right? <laughs> iPhones and Teslas. Um, Russell, obviously, this is going to be more of the small guy. They're going to be affected by it a bit more. So. Um, I think there's some short opportunity there. Um, with that said, uh, let's go across and let's talk about some of the currencies now. So currencies is kind of a wild ride right now. And when I say currencies, I'll do currencies. And I will mention Bitcoin and even Ethereum is up 2% today, only because bonds are just getting absolutely crushed. Now, we typically see bonds get crushed the start of the year. Uh, to start off with this conversation, let's talk about the dollar. Dollar basically flat two up two interest rate rises again that kind of helps stabilize the dollar it's more or less at a level of equilibrium right now you can see i mean we based here we ended friday we came back up and based in it here bounced off of it based in it again we're basing it again 
this 9622 level seems to be a very like almost like a magnet for the dollar right now um again Raising interest rates brings power to the dollar. I think at this point, we look for the dollar to kind of weaken back down a little bit, only because, again, I think the Europeans are going to take this and spike this tomorrow before the U.S.-based session. It will have to move in the morning for the most part, but again, this will dictate all the U.S.-based currencies. I wouldn't say it's at a major level, really top or bottom. And again, let me bring up the 30 so we can get more candles in here. You can see as far as kind of big areas, we do have a big area up top, and we're not really close. Just know, again, we're not trading the dollar next itself, but 96.63 is, is a big level. We're not quite there. And then same thing, bottom-wise, bottom, bottom wise, you know, we, we this yellow area is really where we've kind of stabilized, or even down here. I mean, I would say right now, this is kind of our top-to-bottom range right now. Oh, I'll turn this uh, blue. We're kind of smack in the middle a little bit on the high side. So, you know. Market knows we're going to raise interest rates. I feel like a lot of this is baked in. We'll see where it gets kind of pushed around to tomorrow. Um, but I think we have some potential in this one. Um, again, using this tomorrow morning, seeing where the Europeans driving the dollar, if they're going to make the dollar strong or the dollar weak, I think will help for a lot of different currency trades, not only for the ADP data in the morning, but also FOMC. Now, currency-wise, Aussie dollar. <laughs> may say, well, why the heck did the Aussie dollar jump? And again, you can see we blew through our first line. Here, which again we weren't really a big fan because it, it had already pushed all the way down to the bottom look at that second level I'll, I'll send it across there was your second level and again 7 30 this morning eight o'clock nothing but straight up right all it did was was a parabolic retracement move i would say I, i'd like the aussie up high like this again you may say well wait a second this is all dollar weakness what the heck is going on isn't the dollar isn't this all great for the dollar Yes, it's all good for the dollar, but at the same time, it's acknowledging gold. Gold, you know, the Aussie is going to be the 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 um, the proxy for gold. I would say right now, I would probably be looking for shorting opportunities. There are some levels up here. Um, I mean, there's a level I would say sitting probably more in this range. It's an okay level. I mean, again, it based off. I'm trying to use the whole candle with a bit of a confirmation there. Uh, and again, remember, if this then that. If we can get the 72.57, I think that's a decent rollover, especially with the move we've had today. Um, really, from the low at 7.30, this is up 65 pips. Um, let's see, the daily ATR on this one, indicators. Um, why is it saying new? I think they're messing with my uh, my, my thing here. Um, yeah, the daily ATR is only 63, right? Uh, just from this morning in, if it's 63, we're up. But to its peak, 63. So we did one entire day's worth of movement in just the U.S. base session. We were already looking to go long from that 7190. So, again, it just kind of completed the target to the top side. I would say look out for that for the top. As far as taking another long off of that, I think right now this 7190 becomes the target uh, for reversal. Whether this is it or not, I love how fast it went up. I love how it was, you know, again, very aggressive, no red candles in there at all. I would be looking for selling opportunities. I think 70, 72, 57, 58 is, is probably where we're looking. Um, depending on what time and if we can come up in base in here, we may need to go a little bit higher up there, but I'm okay with that one. I think this is just too much, too fast. And again, it's nothing but dollar weakness. And um, right now with the Dixie up just a little bit, it did this much movement and the Dixie is basically flat. I, I, I look for this to kind of find something and, and, and drop a little bit lower. And, and I know, I know I talked about it here, seeing this kind of get weak, but remember a lot of this right now is being a proxy through gold, which is up. Gold is up big. Gold is gold is up seven point, you know, seven seven point three or point seven three percent right now. That's what's driving the Aussie strength. That will also wane with the dollar weakness coming down again. Okay. Uh Aussie yen. Exploding through the roof. Now, Aussie yen is also approaching a level, and this is kind of why I'm also looking for the Aussie dollar short. Again, the yen has just been going absolutely just. It just dropping through the floor. All the weakness in the yen has driven the Aussie yen, the euro yen, the pound yen, the dollar yen through the roof. And again, I talked about looking at consumer sentiment over here. Um, I think I can grab it or here. Let's see. Can I find it? Um, I didn't have this one queued up. Uh, let's see. Aussie yen. Let's see. Is it going to show me the sentiment? Yeah. 64% of people are short this pair right now. And this is what it's done today. Right. It's better. 77 for the, uh, the the dollar yen. We are approaching levels. When this hits, and again, there's there's profit taking this one, it will be pushing the yen or the Aussie in a weaker direction. And again, that's why I think the Aussie dollar trade is also a pretty decent setup. Do I love this level? It's okay. 
Um, I like the Aussie dollar level better. It is a flat. It did have a very strong push away. You can see that there is actually a little bit of a basing level right above it as well. Hopefully we don't need that, but I think both of those are ones to look out for. And I do think again for tomorrow with as much destruction as we've seen in the yen, I think there has to be some profit taking coming back in. So I like these, these kind of carry over in the Aussie dollar short. Um, look, look for both of them tomorrow. And again, if you are short, the way that this base and kind of confirmed and then based on the top, uh, I do think any type of short position, I think you should be looking for targets, targets down at 83.88. Now, you're a pound. Your pound is continuing to collapse. Now, we had these two dotted levels on there, and we were really looking for some type of a basing and a breakthrough, and it didn't quite give us the entry. We were looking for a pullback here. It didn't pull back. This is one of those ones that I missed, but I was looking for a run down to the 83.40 level. We're there now and stabilizing. Let's see. What is the news for this one? Oh, um, COVID deaths. Yeah, it's all COVID stuff um, for the euro. Um, I've said this in the past. It, nothing has changed with this one. I believe that this pair, I, I, I'm still bullish this pair. Um, reason why is I believe that the, the UK being a single nation, um, they will have a better control on COVID, even though it seems like they're having major, major problems. Like they were the first Omicron, the first Omicron, and like everything first Omicron death, it seems like. The UK and the Omicron just don't mix. Um, the European Union has many nation states, many scenarios. There's an outbreak of a new variant, um, a, a new variant, a, what was that, that Cameroon one that I found. Um, stole it this morning. It's a small outbreak in France, E142, yada, 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 yeah, something else. It had, you know, when they look at it, it has like 43 mutations and 37 uh, deletions from what Omicron had. I was like, wow. I, I assume these things were mutating a little bit. I didn't realize there was 42 differences from the new one for Omicron. I don't know if that's good or bad. I'm not a virologist, but I know that that much change from one to the other one, I, I would love to say it's probably a great thing, but I feel like it's probably not. Uh, I feel like when you have 42 changes, 37 deletions, it's like rolling. Maybe one of those deletions was how mild the Omicron is. Let's hope that it doesn't go any farther. That's why I feel like this one is a continued sell. Now, I mentioned this this morning. Euro pound is an extremely important pair for tomorrow. Okay. Reason why that it is, is because the Euro dollar is the most traded currency in the world. Pound dollar is, you know, somewhat close to it. Depending on what's going on tomorrow with the European session. Okay. If we see dollar strength or weakness, I'm kind of looking for a reversal based off of what we see in the European session. I don't know which way it's going to go. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know if it's going to go up or down, but Whatever way I'm looking for a reversal, I am going to use the euro pound to tell me whether I should trade the euro dollar or the pound dollar. Okay. Again, if it's a position where we're looking for weak dollar, and again, this is hypothetical. If we are looking for weak dollar based off the price action tomorrow morning, would I want to use the weaker of the two pairs or the stronger of the two pairs here, right? With the euro pound. If the pound is the weaker of the two and it's going straight back up again and we're coming up like this, right? And the euro's on a euro's on a huge strong path. I do not want to trade the pound dollar if it's a a weak pound that I'm trading weak dollar. You want to trade the stronger if this is what happens. If it continues to fall like this and it is still pound strength, pound strength, and I'm playing weak dollar, you want to play the pound dollar. And vice versa. If we're playing pound strength, do I want to play pound i'm sorry if i'm playing dollar strength do i want to play pound strength versus dollar strength no you want to play weak euro versus strong dollar so it will determine which is going to be the best trading opportunity for tomorrow for fomc so extremely important overall this one doesn't really have a lot of a you know it has a very small atr 34 to 36 pips uh, i do think though that again this will kind of foreshadow what we should be trading tomorrow afternoon now euro yen it looks just like the aussie yen right Difference is this one actually came up and has already pinged a level, showing us that we're already starting to see some yen weakness. Now, 131.42, it was an old level. We've had this level up here for a while. It was a confirmed top. We had the original basing. We had a touch, a touch, a touch, and this is a front run. It's had a very, very difficult time with that level. So it's not a new level. You guys saw this one last week, but what it did is it ran all the way up. So again, I talked about that Aussie dollar trade. I liked it. Why? Because the Aussie yen was in a situation where we see some profit taking, the yen weakening against other currencies. Well, that coincides with what we're going to see over here. 
Why are we going to see the, the Aussie yen weaken? Well, here's the Euro yen. It's already bounced off a of level. I don't think it's already to three to one. It's probably a little bit late. Uh, this one has kind of already come in, but we're already seeing the yen start to get a little bit of weakness chime in. And again, yeah, that your one to three is right there, right? Perfect level. We're already seeing it come in here. I Same agreement. We saw Euro pound. We saw European weakness versus the pound. But again, Euro heading straight up. I think it's, you know, again, same type of potential pushing back down again. Um, this one, I will say, there are a few levels in here that you may look at and say, well, wait a second, that's not that bad. Yeah, they're not bad. And again, running some fibs off this low to high. I think it's important to talk about this kind of little level here. But I really, in this one, I actually like the 61.8 bounce better than I like this little basing at, at the 50. So I don't want to put too much on it. Um, at this point, it's probably a bit late to get into this trade. But I do know kind of those shorter duration scalpers are going to come in there, look at this, and be like, wait a second, we're right at the 50. Now, if this is the pullback. Do we go short? Do we go for the profit target? That's entirely up to you guys. I'm not going to go that crazy with it, but I'm just going to say that right now, again, it has strong push down and has kind of pulled back. And again, it turned where it should have. It's having some issues right now. Will we continue down? We're ready to 50. There will be some traders stepping in there as well to take this one short. But I think it coincides on a couple different pairs. Um, I don't like this zone. I, I I actually am okay with this 130. I like the way that it held there. Uh, we do have an alert the next time it comes down here again if this breaks. I think 130.12, if we're going to stay short, I think that's a target first. But I do think that there could be a potential bounce over this tomorrow too with FOMC. All right. Uh, Euro dollar for tomorrow. So Euro dollar, we were looking for this to retrace back up. We didn't know which level. We had two good touches, and actually this should be right about there. We were looking for it to move, and it, it didn't. It came through a touch. It actually went to the lower area on this one. Uh, we were looking for a little bit more of an aggressive entry. You can see it was, the, it was actually the more conservative entry is where it really took off from. We were looking for up. It went up, and it based. I wouldn't say the Euro dollar is doing much. 24 hours, it's moved 11 pips, less than a pip an hour. So you know, Euro is really just not – it's not moving much right now. It's kind of – if anything, it's – it's kind of more weak, right? It's the weak week of the pair. And uh, we're really, our next level is down here at 112.63. Um, this one has been pushed to the brink. It's a, it's a mirror bottom. I don't think this one holds again. I think really the next level that we're looking at is probably, and again, I don't even love the zone there. This one's going to be rough, unfortunately. Um, I don't love any of them. I kind of want to see where it stabilizes. I'm kind of rooting for it to go up. I like to get some decent top and bottoms. I like the 113, uh, 113.80. It's a bit of a run for tomorrow. That's about 88 pips. That's going to be a lot of kind of, it's a lot of dollar weakness to come in from now till tomorrow. Um, a lot, a lot. Uh, it may be easier if it kind of pulls back up. And, and this is only about 60. Uh, this may be the level we're looking for tomorrow, although it's a little bit early to kind of foreshadow what we can do. Um, I, if this starts to go higher, it's not stopping until we get up top, uh, probably up in, in that level. Um, but if we have, you know, if our news event comes in tomorrow here, right, if price is up here, uh, I think this is a decent, again, decent level short. Again, we got to see what it looks like in the overnight. But right now, there's not really anything active today for this one. Euro yen, yes. Euro dollar, no. Uh, pound yen. So pound yen actually did have a level, you know, it is a level that kind of choppy. And again, we, we kind of blocked off the entire basing, right? It is actually punched through that just by a little bit, but it's all of a sudden put in a lower high. So we're kind of in that same range, kind of the same push. Now this one is way overextended. Um, this one since really the European open till 11 o'clock, 170 pips. That's more than a daily ATR. We're high. I would say also. I would be looking for, and again, this is that scenario that I just talked about with the Euro pound. It's yen weakness, right? We're seeing yen weakness here. We're seeing it here. We're seeing it here. But we're also seeing pound strength versus the Euro pound. So that's why we're able to kind of blow through some levels. I do think there'll be a little bit of profit taking in this one. But at the same time, I, I, you know, I do think the yen will kick back a little bit. I do think the pound will probably kick back a little bit. But I, I, you know, I, I'm definitely in the bullish camp for the pound. So it's one of those ones. It's kind of strong, strong. You know, do you really want to mess with strong, strong, or is there better opportunity? I think that there's better opportunity to take it in, in other places. Um, so again, it's not my, it's not my favorite as far as the retracement goes. Uh, will it retrace? Yeah, sure a bit, but I also think we'll get some pound weakness. So it'll be kind of a little bit of a pullback, but again, I like this one to continue higher. Um, I would not trade pound yen though for uh, FOMC tomorrow. Avoid this one. Now pound dollar. So I like the pound dollars rising. Uh, there was actually a level in here and again, it pushed it 
pretty much all the way, but I kind of liked how it rolled off this 150, uh, 135, 19. It did hit it, pull back and started the base, which again, telltale sign we're going to break through. When we ended with this green here, and then we opened and kind of started fluctuating, you're out of this position. You're definitely not taking this one short. Okay. And again, this would have been a very, very quick in out. Like, listen, we're not, we have no interest. Get yourself out of break even. I would say where this one is at right now, I would delete this level and I'd like to see a new top. I like this candle. The big question is, is this candle going to hold as we're seeing that dollar strength pour back into the market? There's a decent candle. I like the formation. I like that it's pulled down and kind of base. I like that it's touched it. The question is now we need a really, we need a red close below this level. Okay, to show us that we have a confirmed trend change. And again, that would be a red, green, and then a red close below. That is one sign of a trend change. Now, question is, how much do people pull this down? Um, again, we know that in the rising interest rates is definitely something. Kosh Curry is obviously, you know, he, he made some comments. But again, the strong pound beat the strong dollar in this one today. Strong dollar is down. Um, question is, do we hold high for tomorrow? Right. And this is why I said the euro pound is going to be so important for tomorrow. I wouldn't be surprised to see if this starts to tick down as the market starts to prepare for that dollar strength coming in. If we have a disappointment tomorrow, it's going to need to grab some type of a level here, here, something over here for all this news to be able to turn and bounce off of. And again, what this is, is them saying what everybody already knows. And then every retail trade on the road going, oh, my God, they just said this. Yes, but the market had already prepared for it. It's setting up a trap for them to basically assume that the dollar is going to be strong, but it was already priced in. So it does the exact opposite. And then it gets we trying to capture all those people. So I'm looking to pull back again. I mean, I think, you know, there's a decent level in here. There's a decent level in here. Um, really, there's a decent level even right here as far as news goes. Um, I think really any of these levels can be pretty decent as far as um, change. These, these are not shorts. Um, any of these three levels in here, again, this one, not as much. Uh, I like that one much, much better um, up here. I think any of these levels could be potential pops, right? Based off of what they say. But where we are right now, I would say that it's kind of more set up the way that it's set right now. If we, you know, profit taking comes in, the pound weakens a little bit, dollar strength is a little bit. Pulling back down, and again, you know, could you get long? I mean, the other option, too, is if we, the European Open is sitting, if we pull back and the European Open is, like, sitting somewhere like this. Actually, European Open would be, oh, yeah, right there, right? That could be long before news, before another spike down. So a lot going on with the pound dollar. Right now, I would say more bearish. It's at a level right now. We need it to close red. If it closes red, there's a, probably a short this afternoon until at least the European Open, which is right here. So use some caution with that. Dollar CAD. Yeah, I was looking for a pullback. Look at so talk about wanting to get short the dollar cat. And again, this red in here, we're looking for a break of this one. And we got it, but it wasn't really the, the best of breaks. Our target was down here. We just hit our target a little while ago. Look how close this missed. This is the most frustrating thing in the world when you're like, oh, I got a short here. And then you miss it by 1.4 pips. So yeah, I was looking for the short, never got the entry in there. Again, expected it. One to three was to this level. You can see it blew it. It had no problems. It based and then continued all the way down to our overall profit target. So you know, uh, this should be right there. Um, yeah. And again, a lot of this right now is oil, right? Oil is at 1.53%. OPEC, we're, you know, have, have trust in OPEC. With it pushing back down, it's just bringing dollar strength or dollar, you know, dollar weakness in, CAD strength in. I would say look for opportunities to go long. Um, there's probably a level in here that we may go to. We know we got a couple levels down here just a bit lower. The way to look at this one is kind of see, you know, again, couple factors. One, what does the API oil inventory report at the close of business today look like? Okay, that's going to move the European market around. Then tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m., we have the oil inventory report, the EIA number. That's going to move oil around as well. Based off of what OPEC says today, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a negative number. Okay, that can help propel us higher or, you know, propel oil higher. That should help bring us down. Right now, it looks like oil is helping us position the dollar CAD for a long for FOMC. Okay, 
where the level is, we got to kind of see as we get closer. It may form a new level in the overnight as profit taking comes in from the short and bounce. Not sure, but I would be looking to get long tomorrow. Let's see, more of a, uh, we're at two o'clock. Yeah. Um, yeah, here. I, I don't know where it is, but I'm looking for, I'm looking for this to go long from FOMC. Okay. Don't have the zone. You need, we need to find it on the way down. Um, could, could it potentially be this level? Sure. It could potentially be that level. Um, I just don't know yet. We got to get a little bit closer. That's it's more of a tomorrow morning thing. Uh, Dollar Swiss. If you guys attended yesterday, you knew that we were looking at 9190. You need a little bit more space. Um, Dollar CAD, it was like, oh, yeah, so close. Go short, go short. Dollar yen, we were looking for the short, and it ended up the yen imploded on us. But the Dollar Swiss had a little bit more to go. Great Dollar Swiss trade in there. It took a while, and this is the Dollar Swiss. Anybody that trades it, again, hit it, came back, hit it, got lower. Again, it was obviously going getting lower lows, and, and the highs were getting lower. So a nice trade. It just took a while, and this morning is what completed it. It was a parabolic move up into a prior level, and again, has pushed basically almost back to the origin of the move. Um, this is catch. This is Swiss strength. It's kind of the similar trade setup. I would be looking for long opportunity out of this tomorrow. Um, it does it push all the way down to this level for the news. Um, could be, could be, but I think uh, getting long the dollar Swiss tomorrow will be important. Um, again, Anything that drives any strength towards a dollar, the Swiss is not going to put up a whole lot of strength. It's more of a geopolitical pair. I will say with the United States admitting it and, and, and Russia and everybody else saying nuclear weapons are bad, we should never use them ever. Everybody agrees, right? Nope, we shouldn't use them. That is obviously um, hurting the Swiss a little bit. But now all that, all that data is kind of wearing back off again as we you know come back to yeah. You know, it, it's helping right now. Right. It, it, it's bringing some strength in, but that will dissipate pretty soon. And I think dollar strength tomorrow is the way to go. But profit target is out. Any of your shorts on this one? Uh, again, I think you should be gone. Um, dollar yen also pushing into new highs. And again, I'm kind of looking for a top level on this one. Um, dollar yen, I would not trade for FOMC tomorrow. There's too many factors involved with it. We do have a decent top. May, maybe maybe that becomes our new top on there. Um, I would say this one has a couple different areas to trade. I mean, if you really if you're just dying to trade FOMC off of it, um, there, there's a couple levels in here. Again, really the only clean long that I like is down at 114.68. Um, but there's a couple levels. Again, see what it does in the overnight. But right now, I wouldn't want to get in, in the way of this one. Um, yeah, I know that the yen, I keep saying it's the yen's going to get weak. We should expect all these to pull back down again. But at the same time, I think the dollar has more power than the proxy of the yen. Okay. Uh, Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin, you see, is uh, pulling back again. Uh, Bitcoin had a bit of a cost carry reaction as well, pushing to the downside. Uh, really, up at 4793 is where people were looking for this one. I think 46,000 is going to be the big number. If we push through, and again, there's buyers that have stepped in right around this 45,800. Um, you know, is it is it an amazing buying level? No, I wouldn't say that. I mean, you can see that this level was a, a bottom, bottom, bottom. Number four broke through, and then all of a sudden it was a top, a top, a top. Number four broke through, and we're kind of dealing with it again. Um, it's one of those levels that it really likes right around this 46. If we can break through 46,000, I don't know. I've heard people call up targets of 41. Um, Tip traders are saying 41,500. 41, um, I don't know. I feel like if we can go down to 41,500, there's going to be a lot of negative people on Bitcoin. But meanwhile, Ethereum is blowing through. It's up 2% today. So Bitcoin, I think we're, we're, we're more or less down the rest of the day. Ethereum having a great run um and again i don't i need to follow uh, ethereum a bit more um i would say it's pulling back probably i mean i would say if you're looking for some buying there's probably some buying in here i, I think fomc will be easy tomorrow i think that the risk i think the risk for all the current the, the the cryptos right now is going to be the, there are three fed positions open if the fed starts to take a stand and again i guess raskin is in if raskin is going to be really hard regulating taxing i mean the, the cryptos are begging for regulation right now because they don't want to be kind of blasted into, you know, thin air once uh, the digital currencies are there. Uh, but I do think 2022, we will have at least one or two official digital currencies from large nations. So hard, hard area. But again, Ethereum is the, is the stronger. And again, a little bit of a pullback. Now I'd watch if we break at this level. Uh, TLT is important. Again, bonds continue to collapse in the start of the new year. Extremely common. You know, you tend to see this all over the place. Um, we will get a stabilization, but again, rising interest rates, again, rates and bond prices, they have an inverse relationship. But again, again, bonds being down, the money needs to go somewhere. Uh, and again, that's why, uh, again, the VIX is down to 2% right now. We should see these guys, they'll pop once lunch is over, which is almost there, um, should be back. Now, oil, okay? 
Here is oil today. Again, I think we're waiting for the API report. Um, OPEC Plus had a little bit of a reaction, and it's kind of stabilizing. I think 77.92 is really kind of an area that we're focusing on for potential shorts. I'd like if we can get driven up there before the European session. Um, I think really what happens tomorrow morning right here, uh, right here, is going to tell us a lot about tomorrow. That's when the we'll start kind of the, the blue box here till 8.30. Um, again, that's the European, quote, oil session. Very, very important to see what happens. Again, we've had a lot of this down up. Then we had kind of the up and then kind of down. It looks like it wants to struggle today. Um, as I said, OPEC, uh, I, I said I mentioned it. OPEC said they are not changing the 400, right? They're not increasing it. They're going to stick with the existing policies, which I think is fine. And then they also made this comment about, hey, listen, we're flexible enough. We can manage the demand ourselves. We don't need your help. Again, the United States, we can manage the demand as well. We have plenty of refineries here. We don't actually need OPEC plus to do anything. Um, so it is interesting that they are once again trying to say, no, no, we're in control. We're going to change it all. Um, and we're going to continue to let them have the power. So very, very interesting statements from OPEC. Um, again, I'm thinking we're going to have another negative number tomorrow. And I wouldn't be surprised if, again, Europeans drive this down and look for a long. Europeans allow this to creep back up again, look for a reversal and a short tomorrow. But again, tomorrow morning trade, use the 10, three, the, um, the 10, the, oh, I'm sorry, the 35 and one strategy at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning and you'll be good. Natural gas, kind of getting blown up. And again, it was in an extreme level. It came up this morning at 730 and dropped. It's back at that kind of equilibrium level right now. Right now, it, it looks like really our top and bottom. I can move this up here, right? Our, our top and bottoms of this one are really kind of the two extreme ranges. Um, I will say, I do believe it's right. Yeah. Fib wise, we're kind of messing with those 50% targets right now. Uh, natural gas, uh, you know, right now the East Coast, where I, have, I have 10 inches of snow outside. It's kind of slowing everything down on the East Coast. It's supposed to get warmer later in the week, but then there's another snowstorm coming. I think natural gas is waiting for some headlines. I know there's 850,000 people without power right now. You're typically, you know, not using as much natural gas when you don't have power in your house. You're finding somebody else's house. So, again, not necessarily surprised that this is so far down. Um, I would look for buying opportunities. I'd like it to pull back down if you can get to 354. Take that opportunity. Not there yet. Gold. Gold has stabilized. We talked about gold breaking through the 1798, and it did. We were looking for a bounce, and it did. It gave us a bounce. It kind of hit this level yesterday a bit. And then use the 1800 and then we hit 1800 again at seven o'clock today hit that same level that 1798 right right here and then it was off to the races Koch curry helped us out on this one said there's inflation it's bad we got to do something right now though i'd be careful we're, we're running into some sellers at, at 1815 uh, i'd like to see what the europeans do right now we're kind of in the middle of the range you know fib traders are going to look at this and say wait a second we're at the 50 percent. i got sellers stepping in here should i be going short yeah i would say it's not horrible, right? It's not horrible, but I would be a little bit cautious with it. Acknowledging that inflation is worse than expected should help gold go higher. Um, but if they are very hawkish, saying we're about to crush, we're we're going to crush inflation. Remember, gold is a hedge for inflation. It is not a hedge for rising interest rates when you're smashing inflation back down again. So. A lot of the trade on this one has already occurred. But again, we're kind of sitting right in the middle of the range right now. Be cautious with that. Again, great trade set up this morning off of that 1798. Definitely a, a number that we want to watch out for. Now the question is, are, have we formed a kind of a confirmation level up top around the 500? Uh, is this a potential short or a target for tomorrow up at 1829? Um, looking at silver. Silver, we had this trade and we mentioned yesterday was kind of risky, right? These levels were formed on the 30th. We didn't love it. It went to its full target, right? But I was like, I, I really need a day. I need some type of confirmation. Well, we got that confirmation. It came back down again this morning, 7.30 a.m., grabbed the target, went all the way back up again. But 22.66 seems to be a level to watch out for. Now, silver has a level much, much higher. Um, we got a level sitting up here at 23.62. There is kind of that same intermediary, just like kind of gold has. Uh, sitting up in this level um you know i think silver will do a little bit better than gold tomorrow i'd like it to get to a zone before i think uh the adp number will probably help start moving it a little bit but i think this could be a decent one if you guys are unfamiliar with trading gold or silver particularly at fomc again protecting it and keeping as much risk again options are a great way to trade that one whether through nadex or somebody else i think is the way to go uh, but for the most part 
Um, that's pretty much it. I would say, um, you know, one thing too, again, that I'd watch out for, go over to, uh, go to daily effects and then seeing some of what these sentiments are again, right now, 78% of people are short on dollar yen. They've all lost a ton of money today. Gold. It's going up at 73% of people are net long. How can all these people be wrong? All these people are right. I'd say, watch out for that kind of reversal. We just saw again, gold is at a 50% fib level kind of watch out for it. Wall street, 70 people, right? Again, bullish indicators are saying this is going up 78% of people. If all, if everybody and their brother is short, you know, what's going on with this one. And again, you guys can see if it's at 36,000 right now, right? It's at 36,000. This is the strongest of all of them. Has pulled back 1030 reversal, but it's up 0.6% today. So again, everybody's losing money being short that one so far. So just be cautious. And again, watch out for FOMC. That is going to be a big one for tomorrow. All right. So that is it for today. Um, again, kind of flies by. I always look down. I'm like, wait a second. I'm a little bit late today. Uh, market calendars, obviously not for the fourth. Um, this one is going to be, uh, you know, Next week, <laughs> actually, I'll just change it real quick before it's on the recording. Uh, on the 11th, there you go. January 11th, 12 p.m. Stand Eastern Standard Time. We will be back again. Um, again, sponsored by Natix. Thank you guys so much. If you guys have any questions, you're more than welcome to send me an email. Um, again, send it all. Questions, comments, recommendations, anything you want. Send it to support at keeptradingthatsimple.com. Thank you for joining me today. And uh, again, I'll catch you live tomorrow morning on YouTube. Um, and Happy trading this week and happy new year.